In the middle of the 1800s, a lot of people came to Australia in the gold rushes, and they came to seek their fortunes because they didn't have any. Being very poor, they had to come with nothing but a pick and shovel, and they made their tools and their implements often as they went. One of the things they really depended on was the windlass, which was this thing. You see it above wishing wheels now, but it was used to haul their partners in and out of the mines, to lift up the dirt from where they'd been digging, and with any luck, lift up a gold nugget or two. Of course, if you let it go, you're in trouble. It could unwind and take your hands off. And that was a very useful device, and it's a simple machine. The simplest machine you've probably seen is a lever, and in a sense, they both work in the same way. What happens is that you have a heavy weight with a lever. If you want to lift it, it's too heavy for you. You get a stick or a plank and put it over a pivot, in this case a stone. By jamming the short end of the lever under that and pressing down on the long end, you can lift quite large weights. But there's a payoff. You can't lift that weight. You can at the end of the lever. What you're doing is to make your hands go through a very large distance, whereas the weight only goes through a small one. So the payoff is distance for weight. And that's what the windlass does too. In order to lift things up, you're going through a large distance there and the weight is going through a small one. But because of that, you can lift a much larger weight than you otherwise could. Well, amongst the people who came to the gold fields, there were a lot of Chinese and they were extremely hard working. But even the hardest working people liked to have a bit of help. And that was the Chinese windlass and it's a remarkable invention. It was really the forerunner of the block and tackle that we know today. And it was much more powerful than the ordinary windlass, and it worked like this. First of all, it had two sections, a thick one and a thin one. And the rope was wound up on the thick one in this way, and then passed under a pulley, which wouldn't have been aluminium and plastic like this. It would have been probably handmade out of wood. And once it was there, that rope was tied onto the thin part of the Chinese windlass, and it was secured there. And if I just put that pulley around the right way, you can see how the bucket went on, like this. You notice that it's not unwinding the windlass. What happened though is that when you came along as a Chinese, you came and operated the windlass here, you can see that lowering it, the rope is coming off the thick bit, but it's winding on to the thin. So the difference between the thick and the thin is very small, and the weight is hardly going any distance for the amount of turning that I'm doing there. Because of that, there's a tremendous payoff. And with a small amount of effort here, you could lift very large weights indeed. And also, when you let it go, the weight of that didn't unwind the windlass and smack your hands around. So that was one of the Chinese contributions to this country, the Chinese windlass. A remarkable little invention.